Welcome back to the Common Application. Let's complete the application to George Fox University. Before we log in, I want to point out that I've made an effort to be just as prepared to do this section as I was when I started my Common Application. So I've pulled up the tabs for information that I think I'm going to need in order to complete this application, including having my short answer responses for George Fox's application already written, ready to copy and paste into that section of the application. So let's go ahead and get started by logging in. And the first page that is going to come up is my dashboard that has a list of all of the universities that I'm planning to apply to using the Common Application and a little bit of information about each of those applications and where I'm at in the process. So I'm going to find George Fox and show more details. And you can see here that I have already completed parts of the application. The common application, that section that has all of the questions that are being asked of for every college is already complete. I've got some other things that are still in progress, like these questions. And then when we get to this section around recommenders and FERPA, um, I'll explain why that's already shown as complete here as well. But let's click on questions that are in progress and go ahead and get started. So you'll notice that just like before, there on the left-hand side, there's uh, some menu options that show where I'm at in the process. These questions are just going to be asked by and for George Fox. So it's possible that as you're going through the process of answering these questions for each college and university, some of them is going, are going to sound or feel very similar or maybe even identical. And that's okay. It's because in this section, we are answering questions that will only be submitted to the university that we're working on right now. And many of them have similar questions that they want to ask of us. Just as before, questions that have a red asterisk or star are required and questions that don't are not required, they're optional, uh, but there may be a really good reason to answer them and so we'll talk about those as we go through. But let's go ahead and get started to just answering these questions. Preferred start term means when do I plan to begin college? As you know, I plan to graduate in the spring of 2021 and so I will be entering the following fall. The type of admission plan is asking me what kind of application am I submitting to George Fox? So these are basically based on, on when I submit my application and when I might hear back from the college. Early action, there are two options. Those are two different deadlines, um, but for the same basic thing. It means I'm submitting my application under an earlier deadline and I'll hear back from the university a little bit earlier about what the decision is. Rolling admission means that when I submit my application, they're going to review it and they'll get back to me as soon as possible. The, this is generally going to be something that happens after the early action deadline. I'm going to choose that for the George Fox application and then move on to the next question about my preferred residence. This is a question about do I plan to live on campus in a residence hall or do I plan to not do so? And the answer for me is yes, I plan to live in a residence hall. And you'll choose what is correct for you. Fee waivers, this is the application costs money to apply um, unless I qualify for a fee waiver. And I notice here that if I qualify for a fee waiver, I have to make sure that my application is being submitted prior to November 1st. Um, and in this case, I am not planning to use a fee waiver, but if you are, you can choose that option. Um, I do, however, plan to uh, so apply for need-based financial aid, so I'll go ahead and click yes here. So that is, I'm planning to submit my FAFSA or ORSA, and I can click continue. This is a question about what am I interested in studying when I get to George Fox? And I am being given three different options. So I can be as 
interested in a number of different things as I like. And so when I click here, I can see that there is a long list of options of things that I might be interested in. And so I'll want to go through and choose those. Now, the first thing I want to know, let them know is, I don't really know, I have so many interests, I haven't decided yet, and so I'm going to choose that. But then I'll give a couple of other options um, so for example, I think possibly I'm interested in, I really like helping people, so I am interested possibly in social work, and let's choose one more that I find particularly interesting. I'm interested in communication, and so we'll choose that and click continue. Now. This activity section is different from the activity section that we completed in the Common App. That was when we said what we participate in in high school, and this is asking what activities that exist at George Fox am I interested in possibly pursuing once I attend. And I have the option to submit up to five choices. And so I can run through this list here and see that there are, again, a number of choices, and I can choose up to five of them. And so I think I'm going to choose community service because I like to volunteer, and I'll add another activity. And maybe I will choose, I'm taking a photography class this year that I'm really enjoying. And so I'm going to leave it at two, but you can choose up to five. And you just do that by clicking add another activity and selecting additional ones and click continue. This contact section is asking, how did I learn about George Fox and what made me interested in attending? And I have up to 10 different options that I, uh, that I can name. And they're asking me to say, to list those in the order of influence, so which is the most important thing um, that made me interested. And so let's take a look at what the options are. And so I have a friend who attends, and that was the most influential for me. And I had one other thing that helped me to understand a little bit more that this was a good, good option for me. And that was talking to my mom about it. We agreed together that this was a good choice for me. And so now I'm going to move on. And this is about how the college can contact me. Is it okay for them to contact me through my cell phone, either by giving me a phone call from an automated system or texting me? And typically a college might do this because there's a deadline coming up or I'm missing a piece of my application and they just wanna send me a reminder um, or to let me know to be on the lookout for something in my mail or email. And I am okay with that happening and so I'm going to go ahead and say yes and provide my cell phone number for them. So I'm gonna provide it correctly and press continue. Now they wanna know a little bit of information about my family. Now yes, we did provide some information about family in the Common App section, but here they're interested in particular in my family's relationship with George Fox. So first, do I have any siblings who attend or have graduated from George Fox? And the answer for me is no. If I clicked yes, yeah, um, it does ask me to tell who my sibling is and provide some information about them. Um, but again, for me, the answer is no. Uh, I also have no relatives who've ever attended, but just as before, if I click yes, it's going to ask me some additional information about them. But for me, the answer is no, so I can move on. There's an honor statement for George Fox, and this is going to be an important thing for me to read. Um, and so there, it, it is here, it is also available on the website, and I need to read this and agree to it before I sign my name. And so you wanna make sure that, that you take the time before you sign to read the George Fox honor statement. Okay. Once you've read it and feel confident signing, you can go ahead and do that and click continue. 
Now they're asking for my answer to the question of what was the most important factor in choosing to apply. And as you'll recall, I have already written my response to this and all I need to do is copy and paste it. So I'm going to do that now. And click continue. Now we get to this section about called recommenders and FERPA and the FERPA release authorization. Now because I have already been working on other colleges that I'm applying to using the Common App, I've already completed the FERPA release authorization and this is something that you do one time for all of the colleges that you're applying to. What is FERPA? It's the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. This section is all about you providing permission for your high schools or any colleges you've already attended to share your academic records and recommendations with the college. It's the way for you to get information from your high school to the college and protect your privacy rights. And so let's take a very quick look at what that is all about. We have already authorized the release of records and I have waived my right to review recommendations. When you do this for the first time, you will have the opportunity to read some instructions that you should absolutely read all the way through and click that you read and understand them. And it's going to let you know that you, one of the things you're going to be asked to do is say whether or not you want to waive the right to review your letters of recommendation. Do you want to say, yes, a recommender can write their recommendation and I will never see it? Or do you want to say, no, I'm not okay with that? And there are some advice about how to make that decision for you here. Once you've done that, you'll click continue. And then this is the form that you're filling out to let them know what your choices are and that you understand that once you've made this selection and you've submitted any application or any recommender has submitted an application that um, you you understand you cannot change your mind about this at that point in time and so um, you can go ahead and click save so the very first application that you work on a very first supplemental part of the application that you work on you'll be asked to do that section the same is true for recommenders. You have the opportunity to invite people to participate in this application process with you by writing recommendation letters. You only need to invite your recommenders one time and then let them know when you, um, and then the Common App will let them know that you have asked them to do so. And you can choose which colleges you want them to write a recommendation letter for. So we have already invited our counselor to write a letter of recommendation. And for George Fox, we have the opportunity to also invite a teacher or an, another recommender. Um, and then we also have the opportunity to invite somebody to read our application uh, and provide us some feedback on it, but they cannot submit any forms on our behalf, whereas recommenders can submit forms. So in this case, I am going to ask another recommender. I have the option to ask up to five people. And so let's see what that looks like. I'm going to invite another recommender. And I these are the different types of people who can do that for me. And I'm going to ask a clergy person to do that. George Fox is a Christian college. And I'm going to invite my clergy member to do that. So I know that this is their email address and they are clergy. This is Mr. Stan Oliver. And yes, I would like to offer them the opportunity to write a recommendation for me for George Fox. And so I will click invite and George Fox will automatically invite that person by email to submit. And I, it says here, obviously they didn't know, <laughs> they, haven't, they haven't gotten that message yet, but it says here not started. And once they have started it, this will change to let me know that they have been working on it. Okay, and then I can click continue. Or I could ask additional people to um, 
submit an a recommendation on my behalf as well. Now I'm getting to the point where it's time to apply uh, to submit my application and there are three things that I need to do before we're ready to go. The first is review my application. It's always a good idea to read everything and make sure it's all correct. Then if I'm going to pay the application fee, I will do that and then I will click submit. Um, and it's giving me a note here that when I'm paying my application fee, this is going to take me to a different service. I'm going to go outside of the Common App website and then I need to come back to Common App in order to click submit. Um, this is a reminder that I submitted a personal essay when I put together my common application and many of my colleges required that but George Fox didn't and but I have the opportunity to share that essay with them uh, and I'm going to say yep sure I would love for them to read what I wrote there and now I'm ready to review my application. The first thing that shows up is a preview of a PDF and I can actually load that into a much bigger screen and I'll want to do that and read through everything here just to make sure that it's all accurate and correct. And once I've done so, I can say, yep, I've read through this and I wish to continue. Now, George Fox does not charge an application fee, so because I'm applying before November 1st, and so I can say OK. And now I have the opportunity to verify a few different things before I submit my application. And these are all with red asterisks, meaning these are all required and I need to make sure that I know what they say and that I understand and agree to them. And so I'm going to read through each of these and click the box once I've done so and agree to each of these things. Okay, so I'm going to go through, and read, click, sign, date, and click submit. And when I click that button, I have applied to George Fox University, and so have you. Congratulations.